Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Father, sanctify this place with your presence. Sanctify this atmosphere for your glory and for your power. Sanctify this house, dear Lord God, with your spirit and your power. Father God, sanctify this atmosphere for healing. Sanctify this atmosphere for miracle. Sanctify this atmosphere, dear Lord God, by which, dear Lord God, your spirit and power will move upon this house, in this house, dear Lord God, from room to room, sanctifying it, cleansing it, dear Lord God, by your spirit and power, so that, dear Lord God, everyone in it, dear Lord God, will come into subjection of your mighty and awesome presence that heal, deliver, sanctify, dear Lord God, so that everyone, dear Lord God, in this house, mind and heart and soul, dear Lord God, will be upon you, dear Lord God, for worship, admiration, attention, attraction, and most of all, dear Lord God, for us to be filled, hallelujah, even through our five senses, dear Lord God, with dear Lord God, you're not only your presence, but with your word, not only with your word, but the songs, dear Lord God, of Zion, hallelujah, the songs of Zion, the songs of the angels that they sing unto you. At this hour, Lord God, as we subject everything to you, everything, so that, Lord God, in the day and this hour, Lord God, we will go knowing the Lord God, you got this. We will go forth knowing the Lord God, you have gone ahead of us to take care of everything that need to be taken care of. And all we have to do is give you the glory and the honor and the praise in this hour. In the name of Jesus Christ and by the prophet Holy Spirit, amen. 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 Beloved, we are continuing our journey this morning through the book of Acts. We have seen <laughs> that even though this book was written hundreds of years ago, that the same spirit that was then, the same spirit now, it would seem times have changed, you know. We call it, we live in a modernized world. <laughs> Cultures of change. The way people used to dress or back then, they don't dress like that no more. There were time people just wrap cloth around themselves. Now people wear pants and shoes. There was a time people ride donkeys, now they drive cars. So times, when we look at it from the sensual self, from the, through our eyes, and what we see and smell and taste, all these things in here, all that in the you know, physical realm has changed. <laughs> But the spirit remains the same. People were murdering then, they're murdering now. Some hear the gospel then, some hear the gospel now. There were those who fight then the gospel message of Jesus Christ and kill those and persecute those who carry the message then, still do it now, all through centuries. There are those who are blind to it. And then there are those who are receptive to it. I do not know, but I can only pray for you, beloved, that you're one of those who are receptive to the gospel message of Jesus Christ and be saved. Because throughout history, there's one thing that always happens to everyone. We all must die. Mm-hmm. dead there is not one bad man that I know bad and mighty whether it be a, a, a world leader a leader of a nation country and have the most powerful weapons and and a big talk and all this kind of stuff to the look up here in the bush with his machete all die And 
even though physically they die in this world, there's a part of us that never die. It is our soul, our spirit, and it must go somewhere, and it must face the Lord and God of both the spiritual and the physical realm. His name is Jesus Christ. And beloved, you who reject him and chose to be mighty in your own strength and glory and power, would you be a president, a king, or just a peasant? You will know who is Lord and who is God on that day. I've been told him many times, even though I've been in many places and many situations, where and I've seen people peacefully right before me. Transition. Not a shake or nothing. Transition. I read of those who in the flash of that moment, when the silver cord is about to be broken. We read it in the book of Ecclesiastes. It is that cord that connects the soul to the body. As long as that silver cord is attached to the body, the spirit can get out and go to places. That's why people have dreams of visitation to places so that the spirit can travel, can get out of the body and travel. And when I was young, I'm reading a lot of books, a lot of reading. There's a book, I'm not endorsing it. Uh, if they still have those books by uh, a person called Lab Sang Rampa. Don't I know how comes I remember these things? Lab by the grace of God, Lab Sang Rampa, who teaches astral travel. Uh, when I was young in my youth, I used to lay down on my bed and try to project <laughs> my spirit to go to places. So, that silver cord, once it's attached to the body, but there comes a time when the silver cord, according to Ecclesiastes, is broken. It's like uh, cutting an umbilic umbilical cord of a child, from my mother. Once it's broken, the silver cord, it means no return back to that body. It's over. Time to meet your maker and creator. So, beloved, my only prayer is that I pray that God, when you hear the message of salvation, or you hear the name of Jesus Christ, that it stir you up like fire in your bones to want to know who is this Jesus Christ. And you may, you have probably have read a lot of books. But one of the books you really want to read is this. You've heard about it, haven't you? And you've seen it in many pe people's places. You've seen it in many bookstores. And for some reason, you're never drawn to it. You see it, but something immediately draws your attention to others. I can only say this to you, beloved. I can only say this to you by God's grace. Be curious about this and dedicate yourself, try 10 minutes, read a chapter, and become more curious and hungry, half an hour. And if by God's grace upon your life as you get in it, just read as much as you can read, as much. And I pray that as you curiously get into it, your curiosity will transform you into God's weapon of glory. Hallelujah. That's all my prayer to you, for you. And my prayer for you. Let's get into God's word. Hmm. Hallelujah. This morning we are reading from Acts chapter 14, hmm. verse 4 to 6. We see here Paul, by the power of the Holy Spirit, has been sent to the Gentile because Paul said that the ministry God has given to him, that is the apostle to the Gentiles, the one sent to the Gentiles to 
tell them about Jesus Christ and to tell them about this love of God that God had for them by the finished work of the cross that God has sacrificed his son. Come. Hallelujah. So, as we continue in this book by God's grace and mercy, we will see here how throughout this old book there is two forces. One of evil, and one of good. Both seeking our soul. Both seeking our soul. And without the wisdom and the grace of God, we will take sides. But the question becomes, whose side will you be on? Whose side will you be on? Verse 4 to 6 of Acts chapter 14. Paul and them is in Iconium. And he reads, But the multitude of the city was divided, part side with the Jews, part with the apostles. Great divide. And when a violent attempt was made by both the Gentiles and the Jews, with their rulers to abuse and stone them. In other words, kill them. Verse 6, they became aware of it and fled to Lystria, Derby, cities of Lyconia, and to the surrounding region. God gives wisdom, beloved. God gives wisdom. Regardless of all the power in heaven and earth that was given to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that we know is with us. God gives wisdom. There is no one who has the kind of a relationship with God. That we can stand up in the face of adversity. And we know what's coming at us. And we know we have the ability to, to escape it. But we're going to stand because, uh, you know, as if we're going to test God or tempt God, I don't know. We have all the power, so therefore we're going to stand up. Now, that gives you common sense. They don't want the gospel? Wash your hand. Wash your feet right there. And leave. Because what you've done become a curse unto them. The Bible teaches us this. Anytime you are witnessing the gospel message to someone and it's by the power of the Holy Spirit and they become offended and want to hurt you, the Bible said, dust your feet off in that place and leave because that place has become a curse and God is going to judge that city and that place, whoever it is. The scripture. So they flee. And as we see Paul and Barnabas here about to flee the city because these people were planning to kill him. We sometimes look at things like this and say, but why didn't God do something about it? Maybe some of you are here thinking to yourself and said, ah, this reminds me of Elijah. What? Elijah just finished seeing the power of Almighty God come down by fire and consume all that sacrifice to prove that he was God and Lord of the of his people. And he came down, he responded to the work of his servant. And in that moment, he destroyed hundreds of the false prophets in that moment. The power of God came down by fire. He witnessed the power of God in that moment. But yet still, a chapter later, he was running from a woman, running for his life. So much so that he, he went to a cave. That so much so that birds got to come and the raven, Bible said, came and feed him. And then later on, God visited him and said, what, what are you doing here? And he began to complain and murmur in depression. 
you know, for his love for his people and, and, and begin to complain. And God said to him, come on, get up. You got work to do. Hmm. You may wonder what type of God is this. What type of God is this? So at one moment you can feel his power upon your life. His presence upon your life. Next moment, where are you, Lord? He said in his word, my spirit does not always strive with man. So it's up to me and you to press our way through. Press our way through to him. Especially for us men. I use some common illustration here by the grace of God. You know, when you see that woman whom you're for some reason drawn to, and God knows what you will do to press in, to get her attention. You know, in that time she ignores you and paying you no attention, you still find a way to press in to get her attention. Even when she says stuff to you, you still, hey, come on. God, you're looking at our heart. Whether or not our heart belongs to him, or we just wanted him to show up and show off, or we just wanted him to, to you know, for sake to demonstrate to the world, you know, how special we are. The question becomes, to whose glory and for whose glory? So God gives us common sense. And he does not impose himself on no one. He's not a dictator. He knows our heart. And he sees our heart. So he did not command them to tell them to stay. It's time for them to go. Because they know the Bible tells them. The people rejecting them the gospel, go. God not tell Elijah, hey, I just finished doing all this type of stuff right here. You know, go and fight that uh, that that woman. Because see, things that are happening within the physical realm that manifesting comes from the spiritual realm. And when God gives you an insight to see what's going on in the spiritual realm, to understand that what you're dealing with here is forces much more stronger than what is manifesting in the physical as spiritual beings there are things that the flesh may say fight that war against that but if you listen to the voice of your flesh and the voice of god and you know the knowledge of the word and you chose to do it in your strength and in your might you get killed god gives wisdom and common sense <laughs> what are these men doing was right God did not tell them to stand and fight. They already know the word. Reject. They reject you. Move on. Elijah just finished doing the work of God and stuff like that. God did not tell him to stand up in his might and strength and fight them. No. Everyone have this season and the time in God's hands. How about you this morning? The message. <laughs> Do you know that the gold. The diamonds and maybe some of the most expensive perfume in the world. If you was to see the sweat and tears and sacrifice of children that will have to get up and work 20 hours a day for nothing for us to get these things even in these early days. And we wear them and we masquerade around them and, 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 and we show off and we laugh with our friends and families and all that kind of stuff. But do you know the price that has been paid to bring that to your table? Do you know the price that has been paid for us to get this word? Do you know the price that has been paid for me and you to be saved from hell? 
Think on these things. Think on these things, beloved. Knowledge is powerful. The revelation of God is unshakable and unmovable. The price that has been paid. <laughs> this morning, in many mines around the world, in many sweatshops around the world, in many places, young children from the moment they can walk and talk have to go to work. Have to go to work. And then you're here enjoying this good pleasure, huh? So, beloved, as we see here, these men have been sent of God to witness the gospel message of Jesus Christ. The gospel of salvation. The gospel that delivers. The message and the name that heals. The name above all names, the name of Jesus Christ. As much as they want to get it out to the world, the world does not receive it so easily. There's a price. Every day we chose to be laborers of the kingdom of Almighty God. Every day we wake up and we draw closer to the Father. I said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. There is an enemy called the devil. This earthly domain is, is, whether you like it or not. He took it from our father, Adam. Because our father, Adam, was given all rights to it, dominion over all things. Go to the book of Genesis. But the moment is sin. When you sin, it means that you disobey God and you obey someone else or something else. The question now becomes who it is that you're obeying. Because if you disobey God, you've got to be obeying someone else or something else. You see? Mm -hmm. So, beloved, my priority for you this morning and this day is this. I pray that God may hope up your ears, your heart, and your mind to be receptive to his word and to seek him and follow him and be an hunger for his presence because the Bible said in his presence is fullness of joy forevermore this world only have pleasure beloved it means a false kind of joy because the moment you get a fix of it you become hungry and you want more and you become hungry and you want more it's never fulfilling pleasure until it become your worship until it becomes your idol and before you know it you're filled with remorse and bitterness and anger. And you put your blame on everyone else except confronting yourself in that mirror and said, I did all this. I did all this. So, beloved, the reason why these apostles have to run for their life is because of people on mind and hearts was hardened against the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It was hardened. So, beloved, each day we get up, we go out to preach the gospel, to declare the gospel message to all, because we are not thinking about our flesh. And this pleasure God has given us, some of us, we would say to ourselves, undeserving grace while we were in the world. Because many times we should have been dead and gone, guilty before a holy God. But he has given us grace. So that this day we can look towards him and say, it's not about the flesh. It's about our spirit. It's about our soul. And I pray this morning for you, beloved, that God may open your mind and your hearts and ears to be receptive to the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of salvation, and be saved. Because, yes, we will die. And if it's God's will, 
Some may live until the rapture. It's God's will. God can do anything you want to do. He's sovereign. And he's holy. So my prayer this morning is that God may deliver you, save you, and your house. Hallelujah. By his grace and mercy, because he loved each and every one of us. Is a God who is of love. And he is holy. And is of justice, beloved. He only allows things according to his time. He is forever. Me and you is not. So we have to order our steps. We have to conduct ourselves by his grace and power upon our life. And the habits and ways that we have, beloved, they say the old thing is so I can become a habit, so a habit becomes your character. So a character becomes your destiny. In other words, you'll get that appetite wait for once and once again you want to taste a more and more and before you know it it becomes that thing in you, either for your health or a poison to your bones. And eventually you become healthy and stronger, live a little longer, or you just fade away. That let your first hack today, beloved. If you have never known Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. May you accept him today. God has sacrificed his son, his only begotten son, the only one who was perfect enough without spot or blemish to be sacrificed on our behalf, mine, yours. Because we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. Sin require blood. And the only blood that God would have accepted is the one by which only he could provide. That's how loving he is. If he did not do that, beloved, if, and I'm just using the word if, it's conjunction, not necessary for English. If he didn't do that, we would have all been wiped out. Because if you go to the book of Revelation, you'll see the Bible says, Ebna and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not until all be fulfilled. He also shows us in the book of Revelation that this heaven and this earth, it will pass away, and there will be a new heaven and a new earth. Let us be a part, part of that. How about that? Simply accept Lord Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior. Confess with your mouth and believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The propitiation, the sacrifice, the atonement for our sins. And as you accept him in your Lord, say thank you, Father. Thank you for paying a price I was not worth to pay. By your power and by your spirit, Lord. Come into my life and be Lord and God of my life. I submit my all to you. May you cleanse me, wash me. Sanctify me by faith in the blood of your Son. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Transform my life from darkness to light. This day, as I humble myself before you as much as I know how, thank you for loving me this much. I believe, beloved, you can redo this tape after I send it out. But I believe this day you will be saved. And your heart will hunger after righteousness and after the presence of the only one whose love will never fail you. In the name of Jesus Christ, God bless you. And have a great and wonderful day in the Lord. Hallelujah. May God bless you. May God keep you. Beloved, I will never leave you without saying this to you. Walk in the Spirit. May God open your spirit, your eyes so you can see in the Spirit and the realm of the Spirit. Hallelujah. And please, beloved, faith coming by hearing. Your faith increase because you can only please God by faith. Your faith increase as you allow your hearing to only hear those things which you want to minister to your spirit and make your spirit healthy so you can grow and be a mountain mover and a demon slayer. Mm -hmm. a demon slayer cast them demons out when you see them in your children when you see them about to use your children when you see them about to use 
you in that moment will say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth in whose name I come get out get out of my child I renounce you I rebuke you Satan call that what it is rebuke it it will go because it's the holy name that those forces that come to exploit us distract us use us The only name they recognize and obey in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you until we meet again.